completely appropriately, completely properly. Nothing abusive or disrespectful about it, or rude or wrong. He carried this child. He's not fighting with this kind of man. He's not going to make him look angry, mean, malicious, or hateful toward this child. He carries the child to the car appropriately. And he'll sit there. The black door's open. If he gets there, he has to turn the child. So she goes in feet first and not hit her. And he does that. He turns her in his arms. And he places her in the car. And he backs up. And this, this mom goes over to do what she needs to do to prepare the child. Put the seatbelt on and do what she does. And you can see mom in the back. That's the the child. Mom steps away and closes his door. At this point, this kid's out of the picture. The child's out of his house, he's in mom's car, the door's closed, he's asking to leave, y'all are on your own. He's not his child. He's not his adopted child. He doesn't pay support, he doesn't pay her, wash her, he doesn't feed her, he's not financially responsible for it. Mom's child is put in the car and so y'all need to go. This kind of like turns around. The video the solicitor records. It doesn't have audio, but it's pretty easy to follow the conversation that he sees. And y'all will see that Miss Pang Lang is pleading the case. I'm sorry, can we get past this? And Larry is telling her, you need to go. And they go back and forth for a while. Now, the car is running. Larry has every reason to leave the air conditions on. The child is in the custody of her mother who is raised her at this point. And mom's got this child. He turns and he walks into his house. And mom walks around. Sometime later, mom comes out, goes to the car, looks like she opens the back door, perhaps checks on the child, everything okay. Gets in the front seat momentarily, gets back out, comes out another time, just two times, checks on the child, goes back in the house, and after approximately two hours after the child has left, left the home, the two of them come out, and the tape is obvious. They can't get in the car. The car's locked, it's running, it's locked. Now, whether the key fob is in the car or lost under the bed in the house or the dog ran off with it, it really doesn't make any difference. It's obvious they're trying to get into the car. Now, Mr. King at this point, he's a, he's a volunteer. He's trying to help. I mean, he, there's just a legal obligation for him to ask. But he says he goes to the shed and he gets a wedge and he tries to go to the window and get uh, car door open. He can't get it open. He didn't have it. He can't get it open. But he offers. Well, can I break a window? Just bust out a window and that'll do it. It doesn't seem like an emergency at this point. In this case, he's been running in the car. Can I just bust out the window? Mom says, no, it'll be cheaper us just run to my house and I'll pick up the other two dogs and we'll come out. Just, okay. And again, I'm sure he is. He got his feet was hurt earlier, but he's trying to help. And they get in the car and drive mom over to her house. She gets the key fob and they come back. And you watch the video again. And there's a little bit of issue. They have trouble getting in the car. They do get the car door open. And mom opens the door. And they find that the child is deceased. There's, there's two things that the state has to do. Every time they call and invite them to trial and order them in. And if they do those two things, those two things, they win every time. And if they fail on either one of those two things, they lose it. First, they have to prove that the crime alleged in the indictment, the charging thing, that you'll have in the security, the crime alleged in the indictment, they always have to prove the crime. I can't prove the crime happened. I sure can't prove the crime So it's a robbery case. They have to prove somebody got robbed. It's stealing a car. They have to prove a car got stolen. They have to prove that the crime happened. And secondly, they have to prove that the defendant, the person charged, is the one who committed the crime. In this case, <clears throat> Mr. King, I'm only concerned with Mr. King. Ms. Pang Lang has her own attorney, her own defenses. She's not on my plate, I'm not here to shoot her or to defend her. I'm here on Mr. King's back. And he has three indictments. <clears throat> he has an indictment for murder. Murder is a 
very specific crime, it's a very specific term of art, and the judge will instruct you on what it means at the close of this case. But when you apply the law as the judge instructs it to you, to the facts that you have found, which will be substantially as I have described, you will find that at least as relates to Mr. Finney, there is no grounds, there is no basis, there is no way that he is guilty of murder. It's just not there. It's proven from the murder. Whatever happened there as relates to Mr. Finney is not a murder. It's a tragedy. It's a heartbreak. It doesn't make it a murder. Secondly, he has the crime of causing great bodily injury to a child. And as you watch this video, you'll see that what he does is bring this child out of the house, place the child in the back seat of the car, relinquish any control, custody, claim, obligation, or right to this child to her mother, and step away and say, don't go. And there's nothing about his involvement when he carries this child, handles this child, puts this child in the car, as any way to injure her. Further, you'll hear under the law, the statute doesn't even really apply to any of them. They're not the ones that do it. Last, there's an indictment for conspiracy. And you'll have that indictment if you hear the law say it. And I will tell you now, excuse me, I will tell you unapologetically, that indictment is a garbage indictment. It's the last straw. It's a throw it in there and see what happens. There's nothing to this. If you read this indictment, it says the two of them conspired to do something. It doesn't say what. I don't believe for a minute the solicitor is going to have the audacity at the close of this case to get up and tell you that Mr. King conspired with someone to murder this child. Conspiracy means two people come together with a plan to commit a criminal act or accomplish some criminal intent that they got together and said, how will we kill this child? Jackson, not at all conspiracy. The judge will instruct you. Proceed. The judge, I will instruct you as to the law. You may proceed. The judge will instruct you as to the law. So, they may have conspired to murder this child. They may have gotten together for some wicked plan. How can we hurt this child? Or conceivably, I think it would be a conspiracy to cover up what happened after they discovered that the child was deceased and they might be in trouble. And in support of that, the state's probably going to show you that when the law enforcement was called, when they responded, Mr. King was as honest, as helpful, as straightforward as he could be. He told them what happened. He said, we were in the yard. I put her in the car. I thought the air conditioning was running. Everything seemed okay. Mom went back outside. Two hours went by. Oh, my God, I can't believe this. Ms. Pangeline's story did not align with that. Her presentation was something different. And if you hear those, it is obvious they're not together on this. They are miles apart. Most of what you need to know about Mr. King's evil heart, maybe he didn't desire to hurt someone and took his life, would be revealed to you when you listen to a 911 call that day. Because he's heartbroken and crushed. And in the allegation, he's a bit different, mean, and malicious. Falls in the face of that dream according to itself. If I've talked too long, I'm sorry. It's a pretty important day. And if nothing else, please try to honor the oath. And keep an open mind until the end of this case and you decide when the judge gives it to you. Okay? If you do that, even though I know it's hard and I know that people have a tendency to prejudge, if you don't do that, then this goes to what a lot of us would call a sacred proceeding. That is, you are called to judge your fellow man into something more of a farce. And don't let that happen. Thank you. Mr. Phillips. As a father of 
two girls and a baby boy. I know a parent's worst nightmare is the loss of a child. That death is unimaginable. This case, what happened that day, is an absolute tragedy. <clears throat> Let me say that again. What happened that day was an absolute tragedy. We know and accept mistakes were made, that things should have been done differently. There's a lot that happened in this case. There are a lot of things that you're going to see and hear that invoke raw emotion. Raw emotion. And you swore before God to ensure that you hold the government to that burden. To prove that this case was murder. This case is about a lot of things. But it's not murder. All the evidence from which you make the decision has to come directly from that witness stand. When you took that sworn oath, if after you heard the government's opening, you felt like you kind of it made your mind up, you violated that oath. Now I'm not saying that to attack you. I'm saying that because we haven't heard any evidence yet. And you have a chance to take a step back and do this the right way, the way you swore and know what to do. To listen to what actually occurred. We wouldn't be here if the government wasn't seeking to convict Rita of murder. She's not guilty of murder. We accept responsibility. Mistakes were made. She should have done things differently. In having that ability, it is her living nightmare. Wake up in the morning and go to bed, and that's all she thinks about. It's what she could have done differently. If anybody's made a mistake and they've had that opportunity where they think a thousand times in their head, I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have broke the window, I should have been more urgent, I shouldn't have left her in the car. She owns this. It's on her soul. This is not a murder case. This is not a murder case. It's a lot of things. One that she'll have to pay for. She'll have to pay a price. There's right. There are consequences for your act, but it's not murder. I don't want to minimize that. We're not going to make any excuses in this trial for what happened. Like I said, it's it's going to invoke raw emotion. It invokes raw emotion from me. Nobody's going to downplay that. Now, again, the government has to try to show that she's guilty of murder beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, how? Well, you can ask yourself, why do we believe she's not guilty of murder? Well, I've contended, and certainly you can ask yourself this. If the government believes she was guilty of murder, why three years later do they charge her with great bodily injury? Or infliction of great bodily injury to a child? If they believe she was truly guilty of murder, why hedge the bet? Why charge her with something else? If they were solely based on that. And I contend there is zero evidence of a conspiracy. Zero. Absolutely none. This case is on video. It's a surveillance cam from Mr. King's residence. There's no smoke and mirrors here. It's all there for you to see. All there for you to evaluate. <clears throat> We're not running from it. And the only reason you're here is because they want a conviction of murder. And that's not what happened. Period. And in this case, again you will have to deal with very difficult things. You'll have to make difficult decisions. But you have sworn to set aside that emotion. I know it won't be easy. 
But again, you've got to make your decision based on the actual evidence presented and not on the grave emotion of what pulls up in you when you watch the video because it, it does hurt. Nobody's going to deny that. The person who knows it hurts the most is Rita. Rita has two adult daughters. Rita served this community as a teacher for 25 years. She was teacher of the year twice. She has a master's degree. She's highly educated. You're going to hear them say that she should have done better. She should have. We own it. 100%. But it's not her. Again, this is an absolute tragedy. No denying it. But don't compound that tragedy by giving in to what the government wants. The solicitor's office, again, in these high profile cases, you have the cameras, the lights, when they're seeking conviction for murder. This case is not murder. When you hear all the evidence, we are going to be confident when we come in and close it to come before you and say, find Rita Pan Lanigan not guilty of murder. Because that is justice in this case. Justice will come for Rita. It's not murder.